Jazz Prince is the guy who discovered Drake. And given that he discovered the most popular artist in modern music history, you would expect some level of gratitude from Drake's management and record label. Instead, he was given the cold shoulder. As Drake's career continued to soar, so did Jazz Prince's bitter feuds and lawsuits. Jazz Prince's life was largely shaped by his father, James Prince or Jay Prince. Jay Prince himself grew up in humble beginnings, but was a businessman and involved in extracurricular activity throughout Houston and was determined to become successful and break the cycle of poverty that existed in his family. He began as a used car salesman and even sold cars to famous athletes in the region. Jay Prince famously said, I grew up where poverty was a serious burden on my family and that had a major part in my mind developing. I wanted to break that poverty curse that existed. 1987 was the year that his son Jazz was born and also the year he started rap -a -Lot Records. In the late 80s, Southern hip hop didn't exist within the mainstream and rappers existed either on the West Coast or the East Coast. So rap -a -Lot Records became the early pioneers of Southern hip hop and its gradual place as the Third Coast. The Ghetto Boys was rap -a -Lot Records' biggest artist and would carry the flag for the South and Houston hip hop in its early days. Scarface, who was a member of the Ghetto Boys, would also launch some key albums through this label, as would other local rappers Pimp C and Bum B, among others. This is a very potted history of rap -a -Lot records, but should give you an idea of the background that Jazz Prince came into. Jay Prince had successfully broken the chain of poverty and now had his 19-year-old son Jazz working at his label. And with the early days of social media and the use of MySpace for musicians, Jazz Prince was in tune with youth culture and the internet so became a valuable asset to the team. He scrolled through artists on MySpace and eventually came across a rapper and singer named Drake. This was the first time Jazz had even heard of the city of Toronto. Funnily enough, there are still screenshots of Drake's MySpace page from 2006. Interestingly, the page opens with the fact that Drake has worked with Clips, which was the former group of his now mortal enemy, Pusha T. As far as I can tell, this was in reference to the song Do What You Do, which featured No Malice from Clips. Another artist that Drake had worked with at this time was Trey Songz, whom Drake had a video with called Replacement Girl. On Big Boy TV, Trey Songz explained how this video came about, saying, We actually met Drake in Atlanta. I was living in my manager's at the time. I was living in his house. It was cold as hell down there because we didn't have heat in the basement, and Drake came in wearing a Montclair jacket, and I was like, Who is this light-skinned guy? Drake played Trey the song Replacement Girl, and Trey was amazed that he could both rap and sing. Drake asked Trey to do the singing instead, and they built a relationship from there. During this time, Trey missed out on a golden opportunity when Drake asked him to sign him. Trey said, You know Drake wanted to sign to me and all that like early on in the career? I couldn't do what needed to be done for him at the time. And Drake's talent wasn't as obvious as it is today, Trey said. He wasn't that guy, you know what I mean? He was a little nervous, he was a little timid. Jazz messaged him on MySpace and got back to him, and they eventually spoke on the phone. Jazz introduced himself and Drake was aware of who rap -a -Lot Records were. To show that he was serious, Jazz said to him, I'm gonna make you famous, which Drake cynically responded, I hear that a lot bro, but if you can, cool. Through his connection with rap -a -Lot Records, Jazz started sending Drake beats to rap over, even ones that he wasn't supposed to have. Jazz then pitched Drake to his father, he said, he was like, let me hear it, I played it for him. He didn't get it, like, what's all this singing he doing on this, on this music? I was like, this is going to be the new thing. Without his father's approval of Drake, Jazz reached out to other people. He decided to send Drake's music to Lil Wayne, whom he was friends with. Wayne agreed to listen to it, and Jazz continued asking for his thoughts on it every day. When Wayne finally got around to listening to it, he said, Yo bro, he sucked. Don't ever play that stuff with me again. Despite not one, but two prominent people in hip-hop dismissing Drake, Jazz persisted. In fact, he had booked Lil Wayne for a party on New Year's Eve in Houston, and the next day Jazz was driving Wayne in his car. So without telling Wayne, he decided to place some Drake on the radio. Jazz looked over at Wayne and saw him bopping his head. He eventually asked who it was, and Jazz responded to him that it was Drake, the guy you told me you didn't like. However, Wayne was now a bit more open to the idea of listening to him. Much like everyone else, Wayne was confused that someone who could rap this well was from Toronto, Canada. Jazz said that he was going to fly him over to Houston so they could meet. The next morning, Drake was on a flight from Toronto to Houston, and that night, they got a bus to Atlanta and recorded the first version of Forever, which by then featured Drake, Wayne, and Kid Kid. They also recorded Stun Hard, amongst other songs. And eventually, Jazz got Drake signed to a management group called Aspire, which was headed by Lil Wayne's manager, Cortez Bryant. Given Jazz was Jay Prince's son, Drake could have easily signed to rap -a -Lot Records. Instead, he signed to Young Money Cash Money partly because Wayne was such a popular artist at the time, 
and a cosign from Wayne would generate an invaluable amount of hype. So Drake got working on his mixtape So Far Gone, and when Best I Ever Had came out, Jazz's life would never be the same, whereas Drake would later say, nothing was the same. He said, that's when it was time to change our lives. I stopped school, I got on the road, it was time to put the play together. It was like, okay, we have everybody here now, now let's make it happen. Drake's success from here on in would be record breaking. In 2009, Aspire signed a record deal with Cash Money. According to Forbes, 33% of Drake's profits would go to Aspire and 22% of that cut would go directly to Jazz as a finder's fee. So Jazz was set to receive roughly 7% of Drake's earnings for his first six albums. Life was looking pretty good for Jazz Prince. In 2010, Drake's first studio album, Thank Me Later, was released and reached number one in the US. Meanwhile, he started dating the singer and actress Christina Milan, who also got signed to Cash Money. But as Drake continued to generate more and more money, the cash didn't seem to flow in Jazz's direction. In 2011, Drake released Take Care and this again went number one. It seemed as more and more money kept coming in, tension started to grow. In 2012, Drake was set to renegotiate his record deal, but before this could be done, Jazz Prince took out a lawsuit against Aspire and accused them of not paying him. And it was revealed that Jazz agreed to the 22% verbally, and it was an oral contract. A report from Courthouse News Service said, A Houston music sign credited with discovering rapper Drake says the artist managers are withholding his $100,000 cut of profits and are stiffening Drake, putting the entire Drake business in jeopardy. In January 2013, it was alleged that Cash Money tried to persuade Drake to break the initial agreement and sign exclusively to Cash Money. Meanwhile, Jazz and Christina Milan got engaged, but before they could get married, they broke up. And lo and behold, sometime afterward, she was seen dating Lil Wayne. However, things weren't exactly rosy with Lil Wayne either. In 2015, Wayne took out a $51 million lawsuit against Cash Money, which he claimed that Cash Money CEO Birdman owed him due to the album The Carter Five. Wayne was promised an $8 million advance for the album in December 2013, and another $2 million when he finished the album a year later, yet none of those payments were made. And at that time, Jazz figured that Aspire wasn't the problem, or at least not the only reason why he wasn't getting paid. So soon after Lil Wayne's lawsuit, he sued Cash Money for $11 million, claiming he had only received $2 million from Cash Money so far. This lawsuit was the start of a confusing and complicated sequence of events. It was revealed that this $11 million was settled, but that turned out not to be true. Instead, the case was dismissed because Jazz Prince had decided that instead of suing Cash Money in Florida, he had decided to sue them in New York instead. In an interview with Vlad TV, Jazz Prince is asked about this lawsuit. He danced around the subject for a bit but then shrugged his shoulders and said, I haven't got paid yet. When asked for an exact time frame of how long this lawsuit has been going on, he just said, too long. This interview was after his fourth studio album, Views, which was also number one in breaking records. In this interview, he also confided that he doesn't talk to Wayne anymore but is still cool with Christina Milan. Jazz Prince didn't clarify whether it had to do with label issues or female issues, or it could have been a combination of the two. In 2017, Cash Money was hit with yet another lawsuit, this time by Aspire and Jazz Prince together. The lawsuit said that the contract further provides that defendants are to pay Drake more than $10 million that should have been paid to Aspire, including at least $4 million in connection with albums that were previously produced per one to the Aspire Young Money Entertainment Agreement. Aspire also explained how cash money was not paying people, and this allegedly involved a lot of sneaky accounting tricks. A report said, Aspire alleges that outside of a few modest advances, cash money never paid out any profits or royalties. That monthly accounting was sporadic, full of inflated and impermissible deductions, and eventually stopped materializing. It was also alleged that cash money created fake statements, minimizing and outright denying the profit earned from the recordings. Cortez Bryant even argued that Cash Money wasn't to blame and this behavior was not ordered by its CEO Birdman. He made the claim that this goes even higher up to its parent company Universal Music Group, who were using Cash Money as a sock puppet for these shady tactics. In 2018, Jazz's father got involved and lashed out at Birdman and his reluctance to pay both his son and Lil Wayne. And by this time, Birdman had become somewhat of a meme due to his infamous appearance on The Breakfast Club and his now ironic demands for people to put respect on his name. J Prince posted on Instagram, I've never been a man to use the word family loosely because I believe life and death is in the power of the tongue. I also walk in great respect for the universal laws, one being cause and effect, simply meaning you reap what you sow. With that being said, I say to this man they call Birdman, don't forget you have children and I know you wouldn't want them to reap the seeds you have sown by doing bad business. This is the truth raw and uncut. This is how you earn respect on your name. 
Jay Prince today is known as a mediator between feuds and hip hop, and despite never signing to rap a lot, has always looked out for Drake. Drake is also friends with Jazz Prince's brother, Jay Prince Jr. Whether Birdman took Jay Prince's advice or not, he eventually settled two lawsuits that had been dragging on for years. In 2018, he finally settled with Wayne, and in 2019, he finally settled with Aspire. Drake was now in his mid-30s, and 2021 Certified Lover Boy marked the sixth and final album that royalties were owed to Aspire and Jazz Prince. Since 2007, when Jazz Prince first glanced upon Drake's MySpace page, the musical landscape has changed indescribably. And one of, if not the biggest influences of modern music has been Drake. Instead of finding the next biggest rapper, Jazz Prince discovered someone whose numbers are up there with Elvis, Michael Jackson, and the Beatles. And whatever the future holds for Jazz Prince, that's probably one of the greatest claims to fame you could have. Make sure to subscribe for more.